Hi, and welcome to another Feature Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm Director of Product Marketing at VMware. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Andrew and Benjamin. So uh, let's start with you, Andrew, first. Thanks, Guy. And thanks very much for the invitation to appear here on Feature Fridays. My name is Andrew Cruz. I'm the Managing Director of Rooted Hosting. Uh, Rooted are a South Africa-based VMware cloud operator. Um, I myself am based in Cape Town, Benjamin's in Johannesburg. Um, we have data centers in both locations. Um, we have a what we feel is a textbook deployment of Cloud Director uh, with lots of integrations and extensions. Um, and we typically deal with, uh, with partners, with uh, the channel, with resellers, uh, managed service providers, ISPs, etc. Thanks, Andrew, and welcome again. Uh, ben, thanks a lot for joining today. Do you want to give yourself a brief introduction? Thanks, Guy. Good to see you again. Uh, my name is Benjamin Kutzer, Technical Director of Rooted Hosting. I head up the team uh, that runs the uh, cloud infrastructure deployments for Rooted Hosting uh, and our data center sites in Cape Town and Johannesburg. Uh, we've been going for uh, just, uh, just over six years, almost up to 60 years now, isn't it, Andrew? Um, and counting with 100% uptime in both locations, and that's pretty much what we do. Uh, we, we ensure that it's always up, always available, and always performant. Brilliant. Thanks, Ben. 100% uptime. That's impressive. And, um, you know, Andrew, I guess this is, uh, you know, you mentioned that you, uh, your main customers are other partners, other service providers and MSPs. So 100% uptime is very important to them. And, and let's talk about today, we're going, we're going to discuss um, about data protection specifically and disaster recovery as a service and the offerings you have in that portfolio. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Rooted and, you know, who you are um, and, you know, some of the aspects of those services that are, are kind of relevant for your your partners and your customers? Absolutely. So when we started out, uh, we wanted to ensure that the kinds of products and services that we were offering were um, ideal for enterprises, um, for enterprise operations. Um, you know, we feel that uh, a VMware platform is, is very suitable for uh, as an alternative or an option for people who are already on premise using VMware and would like to go into the cloud. Um, so on day one, we had two locations so that we could do backups off site and we could do replicas off site to enable us to offer um, that kind of, you know, three to one backup um, scenario, as well as um, to offer disaster recovery. Um, it's a little bit sort of contradictory in that, you know, we, we build our cloud to be 100% up and, you know, touch wood, it has been for 66 months and counting. Um, and um, we, you know, we, we play on that in particular, it gives comfort to our service provider customers um, so that they can provide that comfort to the end users who are enterprises. Um, but at the same time, we still have to offer disaster recovery because it isn't only something that we can do that can take down somebody's um, infrastructure. Um, so although it sticks in the throats to, to, to push DR inside our cloud, um, it is something that we still offer because people still have to tick that box, you know, ransomware or other kind of acts of God. Um, you know, the example in this country in South Africa was um, seven or eight months ago, there were some quite um, extensive riots in, in places like Johannesburg and, and Durban. Um, and we have customers at the moment that have instigated additional protection um, because of these riots, because they said they didn't know whether these kinds of things could affect the actual data center itself, the co-location facility. Um, so, you know, despite the fact that, that you know, as specialists, we ensure that, um, you know, we're keeping the lights on all the time, there are always external influences that could mean that uh, a customer's environment needs to be recovered elsewhere. So we do that across data center. We have two independent stacks. Okay, uh, and you're absolutely right. I mean, we can't foresee the future and, and acts of God and other events that may impact our um, or our customers' working environments. Um, so, Benjamin, just tell me a little bit about um, you know what solutions are you guys deploying in that area today? So for the longest time, we've been making use of um, Veeam integrated into the platform uh, and more, more recently, uh, the Cloud Director Availability uh, set of products that enables ground to cloud and cloud to cloud replication for disaster recovery and continuity purposes. Uh, in fact, I believe Rooted Hosting were one of the first um, companies globally um, to deploy the Cloud Director Availability 
product set back when it looked a lot different. It was uh, one of the beta versions still, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. And um, we've actually helped um, uh, the, the development team over the years to um, shape it into um, a more uh, feature rich product set. Um, similarly with Veeam, uh, with, with backup and replication uh, integrated into Cloud Director and um, ground to cloud and cloud to cloud replication. Uh, we facilitate those software suites for people that perhaps want uh, options when it comes to, to, to uh, covering all bases and not necessarily relying on a single um, software vendor uh, to cover all um, different uh, types of failures that, that could occur. Right. And you've been a, a great partner for VMware throughout. Um, and, you know, you're absolutely right. I think you deployed version 1.0 of Cloud Director Availability. So uh, thank you for your partnership. And we really appreciate all the input that you've had in uh, shaping the product going forward. Um, it's only been a pleasure. <laughs> good, good. Glad to hear it. Um, so it sounds like you've got all bases covered then. You've got the sort of the customer on-prem potentially with Veeam replicating into one of your two data centers. Then once they're in those data centers, they've also got Cloud Director availability to replicate between the data centers and provide additional protection. Um, Andrew, I, I think you had some slides that we're going to talk through more about this um, position. Do you want to bring those up? Yeah, I can do, but actually, I think we've mostly talked about what was on the slides anyway, and um, actually, sometimes slides can be a bit distracting. Um, uh, so I think we should move into the demo, but there was one point I wanted to make um, about disaster recovery, which seems to, and backup as well, which seems to sometimes slip through the cracks when people are looking, particularly with uh, ground to cloud. Um, when you recover or when you um, replicate or back up into a destination, um, you need that destination to have the ability to do backups and replications from there on day one that you recover. Now, the building's on fire. When you've invoked disaster recovery, something terrible has happened. Um, and it seems that there are a lot of people that offer quite basic solutions for recovery without taking into account that you might actually be running in that recovery environment for quite a long time. And if you are, then you need to be backing up and, and replicating that data too. So the, the, the thing that we like about using A, multiple plot products and, and, and B, having our two data centers is that we can offer the ability to um, replicate and, and recover into our production environments, which is also, I think, a key point. You know, this isn't secondhand hardware that's sitting in a corner that's been trickled down um, and replaced by other stuff. Um, this stuff, it works for our production customers. It works for our enterprise customers. It's going to work in disaster recovery. You're, paying an insurance policy, it has to pay out. You can't have somebody point at the small print and say, well, the performance isn't so good because. So yeah, the first thing is that you have to be performant in recovery. And the second thing is you need to be able to apply data protection and disaster recovery to those workloads when they're in their recovery environment as well. And so, you know, we, we feel very confident that we can offer that to, to, to enterprises in particular, because yeah, you might be running for months, weeks or months in recovery as well. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, I just wanted to make that point about you know data protection and disaster recovery. It, it, it's not a one-step process, actually. You need to think further down the line as well. And of course, one of the, the big value propositions for your partners uh, or your, your customers of your platform is that it's a, a VMware platform, a cloud verified platform. So yeah. when you're looking at that um, DR event, fundamentally the business continuity plan that should kick in should be addressing the most critical workloads and getting those up and running, not necessarily the entire estate. And I think lots of people now, because DR is so prolific in terms of point and click, um, people think it's the entire estate they need to be actually protecting when realistically it's actually just those mission critical VMs with perhaps a, a platinum tier of service with a really low RPO and the other stuff can be in a, a silver or bronze layer. Um, and getting those workloads up and running as quickly as possible on that target environment without having to do workload conversions, um, disk conversions, complex networking, and setting everything up from scratch, uh, that's a real value proposition because it's not just the RPO, it's the RTO, right? Well, absolutely. And look, there are lots of, of solutions out there, particularly storage devices, that replicate data. Um, but that's not anywhere near the entire story when looking at a disaster recovery solution. 
you need a, an element of orchestration, um, you, you need failback, you know, Th those kinds of things are, are not taken into account when you're looking at some kind of pure data replication. It's interesting mm -hmm. that you should mention the, 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 you know, only the critical server kind of um, uh, option for recovery. Um, and it's actually also in relation to these riots that we had um, six or eight months ago. Um, our customer was replicating about a quarter of their machines from their premise into our cloud. And it was them that said, we actually need a secondary location to be able to recover to in case something happens to that primary location. Um, so, and this also speaks towards the, uh, the combination of Veeam and Cloud Director availability in our environment. So we are um, replicating using Cloud Director availability from their premise into our cloud in Johannesburg. At the same time, we're doing backup copy jobs using Veeam um, from their environments for all of their um, virtual machines into our Cape Town environment. And we are able to provide them with a, a less RTO or a lower RTO, a higher RTO solution um, for, for um, instant VM recovery for their entire estate into Cape Town. Um, the point is that, um, yes, uh, if something, say, more common occurs, uh, they're able to recover their 60 odd VMs into our um, DC in Johannesburg. But if something really off the scale bad occurs, they can actually recover their entire environment in Cape Town. But that's something which doesn't have to be as RTO minimal um, because, mm. you know, clearly there are bigger, bigger problems afoot. Um, yeah. and, and, but the point is that we're, we're actually offering a solution which combines cloud director availability for replication and disaster recovery and Veeam Cloud Connect backup um, for backup and recovery into our environment using instant VM recovery. That is an interesting use case, yeah, and I, I completely see the um, the use case there, you know, being one hundred percent valid, and that's that's a, that's a really interesting combination of using the two products. So, how, tell me, how have you found? Um, well, let's talk about how have you found Beam and Cloud Director as you know, you run a Cloud Direct Cloud Director availability, sorry, you run a Cloud Director. Um, environment today for your partners to deliver their services to their customers on. Um, these are solutions that plug into Cloud Director. How have you found the deployment, operational management, um, and the capability of those solutions to date? Um, well, in terms of the technical stuff, it's probably better if Benjamin responds to that question. But in terms of the sort of the, uh, I suppose, the, the marketing aspect, aspect of it, um, you know, we pitch ourselves as being as neutral as we can be. And clearly we're tied to VMware from the fact that, you know, we only operate VMware clouds. We're a specialist VMware cloud operator. Mm. But we appreciate the fact that that environment is not closed, um, that you do have uh, the extensibility framework and the ability to integrate into other softwares and other hardwares um, into um, Cloud Director. And so it is, it is nice to be able to have um, to be able to present something a little bit more neutral, a little bit more flexible to customers. It also allows us to cast our nets a bit wider. We're not just, you know, nailing our, our, our colors to, to, to one tree. Um, we can offer disaster recovery with either Cloud Connect replication or with um, Cloud Director availability. So we're not saying one product is better than the other, even if mm. we might think that, uh, you know, I'm on a call with you guys, I have to say Cloud Director availability is better. Um, <laughs> but no, we, we can offer both of those. And, and you know, even, even something like Zerto, which we haven't seen a, 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 a too much demand for, can also integrate into Cloud Director. And we would be delighted to deploy, deploy that if we had demand from our service provider partners um, or any other um, uh, replication solution that integrates into Cloud Director and is self-service. And similarly with backups, so we have Veeam integrated into our um, Cloud Director UI. Um, but if, for example, we saw that there was a demand for Rubrik or Cohesity, and in fact, historically, we had a Cronus um, as well as Veeam in our environment. So you know, we, we're very happy that we have the ability and the flexibility to deploy all of these products. In terms of, of ease of deployment and, um, and ease of use, maybe Benjamin, you can address that. Just, just to add to, to what Andrew was saying, um, in terms of casting the net, uh, using Veeam also allows us to, as an example, go to customers with legacy on-premise deployments where they might be running things like Hyper-V or Nutanix, which is not necessarily natively uh, integrated with Cloud Director. 
um, and uh, almost like a Trojan horse type of scenario where we're able to go in with a backup and disaster recovery environment or, or, or a replication environment. And then long term, we are actually able to convert them and move them off prem into a VMware cloud environment. Um, whereas before, if, if we hadn't made use of, of these different types of third party integrated tools, it, it wouldn't be um, feasible. Yeah. From a from a technical perspective, Veeam, in my opinion, has always very much hit the mark um, in terms of uh, ease of deployment, as well as the vast um, feature sets and capabilities uh, that comes with um, their, their software sets. Um, they're, uh, they're, they've done a, a tremendous amount of work over the last couple of years in terms of their uh, addressable and extensible APIs, uh, their RESTful APIs which in turn empowers us a lot when it comes to automation and self-service and, and provisionment and billing and everything else. Um, and apart from that, um, the, the, the product itself is, is very rock solid. Um, it, it, we hardly ever have issues with it. And when we do, the support is good as well. Great, and um, the Cloud Director availability? Similarly with Cloud Director availability, um, I mean, like I mentioned, so seeing as we've uh, we've seen where it started to, to where it is now, uh, vast uh, leaps and bounds of improvements that have been made over the years. Um, and we find it uh, significantly valuable that we are able to engage directly with the, the teams that, that are heading up the, the development on this and, and feedback um, uh, what we get from our customers in terms of uh, possible feature requests, feature roadmaps, things to be added. Um, things to be changed, um, and uh, similarly, uh, the support is, is second to none. Yeah, I think I think you both hit on two really important aspects. Um, firstly, Andrew, you you touched on um, the point about the ecosystem and support with Cloud Director, and I think in the last three years since the extensibility framework's been out, um, we've seen multiple uh, ecosystem providers stop developing plugins for Cloud Director uh, so that the look and feel of the actual solution is a Cloud Director look and feel requires minimal training then. And obviously from your perspective, it's all in self-service, which makes it very compelling to use um, for your partners with their customers. Uh, and Ben, you hit on a, a really important point. Not all provide, or not all customers are gonna be on VMware. Um, there's a, a lot of Hyper-V still out there um, and having that solution that allows you to do both. Um, I think, as you say, the Trojan horse is a, a really good way of onboarding customers into your cloud. Yeah, so it, it just, it ends up opening up more doors than it ever closes. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of another provider that um, integrates so so openly and, and willingly with, with third parties to facilitate that for, for the service provider channel itself. Good to hear. Okay, so shall we uh, start the demo then? We're going to show you. Uh, look, it won't be it won't be um, death by demo, um, but uh, for a few minutes we'll show you how um, the UI integrates the Veeam uh, backup between our two sites. Um, we'll also show you the UI for how we do um, disaster recovery replication between the two sites, um, and then we'll show you how Cloud Connect replication with Veeam works from ground to cloud. Obviously, we can do that with Cloud Director availability as well. Great. Perfect. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. You guys can see it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just move all this out of the way. All right. We've got a demo organization in our production deployments that we use for these demos. Uh, the organization is actually called Ghostbusters. <laughs> and we're going to log in with Mr. Peter Venkman's username and password himself. <laughs> and this is in our Cape Town deployment in uh, Cloud Director. Once we're logged in, we'll see all the different sites that we have access to, just Cape Town and Johannesburg at the moment, overview of the resources. And thanks to the upgrades in Cloud Director, uh, we're able to click through and manage all the sites independently or bring in vCenter on-premise um, sites as well for, for a central pane of management experience. So Ben, uh, before, you, before you hop on this, to the next, next place, um, I see you've got, obviously you customized the UI a little bit here. Is this something that you yes. offer then to, to partners to customize their instance of the UI? You know, Andrew's gonna kick me because he told me to talk about this first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we provide, because we are mainly a channel driven uh, organization, we provide a level of white labeling um, for, for all of our user interfaces, including Cloud Director. 
the um, Cloud Director user interface itself allows for great um, customization in terms of color palettes, uh, logos, images, um, uh, as well as uh, URLs. So we are able to facilitate um, our uh, channel partners using their own URLs, their own SSL certificates, their own color palettes and branding all on top of our, um, our infrastructure, uh, our Cloud Director environment, our multi-tenant environment. Um, and that is a service that we offer, um, like I mentioned, for, for all UIs uh, that we make available. Similarly, all um, extensible public APIs uh, are accessible and can be used by our service provider partners as well as the end user customers. Very nice, very nice. <clears throat> right, so um, we've got a, a typical uh, virtual data center deployment that we're gonna use to do the cloud to cloud um, demo uh, for the replication with cloud director availability. Um, once I hit the, the more drop down page here, I'll get the availability drop down menu next to all the other extensions that we have installed. Uh, so we've got the data protection with Veeam integrated into the user interface for self-service backups. Uh, we've got the Kubernetes container um, CSE extension at Launchpad and then uh, availability. Um, but the, on the uh, main landing page, I'll see an overview of my existing configured replications coming into and going out of the environment. Currently, I'm not connected to an on-premise appliance, but if I were, it would show up in a similar fashion here. Um, and I have incoming and outgoing replications between Cape Town and Johannesburg in this case. Uh, if I select one of my virtual machines, as an example, for an incoming replication, this would be a VM being replicated from Johannesburg to Cape Town. And I can get an overview of what's been configured where it's sitting, uh, the fallback instances that I have, any tasks historically that have been performed on it. Uh, and if it's live replication, you'll see traffic graphs and disk usage graphs modified by that. Ben, just for a couple of quick questions here. So um, this is obviously what a, uh, a partner would see if they're running a managed service for a customer or potentially an end customer would see if they're driving their own replications. Um, Correct. How, how have you found the uh, you know the training requirement for partners and customers for these these add-ons because uh, you know is it something that is a, a very quick like half an hour onboarding session this is what you do this is how you do it or is there is something more um, extensive that you guys have to do um, so that's actually a very good question. We find that with our service provider partners um, we generally set up one or two uh, sessions that we engage with them on all the different user interfaces uh, that we have um, to, to operate on. Um, with VMware Cloud Director specifically, it, it seems to be very intuitive. Um, and I think uh, after they started changing the looks and feels in the HTML5 UI uh, to make it more, uh, more alike to, the, to what, they, what I suppose service providers are generally used to, which is a vCenter user interface, um, mm. things became a lot more, a lot more natural I think in terms of operations. Uh, so typically we find that uh, we will do one, uh, at most two sessions where we sit with uh, service provider partners and work through scenarios, deployment scenarios, um, and, and, and walk through the, the dashboard itself, um, after which they are completely self-sufficient. Um, and uh, just as, as, a, as, a, as a belt and braces approach, we also tend to distribute VMware's um, tenant user guides for, for Cloud Director, which is fairly comprehensive in terms of the, uh, the, the, the level of detail that it goes into each and every feature and task that can be performed through the user interface. Um, and at that stage, um, service provider partners or their end user customers very much become self-sufficient in terms of, of running uh, the day-to-day -day operations in their cloud environments. And it's a perfect opportunity to plug our partner portal. So we released this towards the end of last year. Um, so our partners have access to a, um, a, a repository of data information, all filtered, filterable via um, the kind of person they are, whether they're a technical person, marketing and sales, or the type of collateral it is, whether that's videos that we link to, you know, your uh, Feature Fridays on uh, on YouTube or, um, or you know, data sheets or other kind of collateral. So we're, um, you know, we're experiencing that partners are now able to go and look themselves to do some training or, 
or to look for information on, on how to do these things. And of course, those reference documents are there as well, but um, sometimes people don't want to read through a 250-page uh, user guide. Yeah, sure. Maybe a video will suffice. Videos are always easily easily consumed. Um, and, and just one more question. So you're doing cloud to cloud here with um, VMware Cl um, Cloud Director Availability. In cloud to cloud, um, you are, you know, in terms of testing and um, offering that service to your partners, they can test that uh, DR failover at any point, so, which means you always need to have the correct resources at each end to allow for those workloads to start up. How have you found the ability to kind of plan the uh, resources required at each end and, you know, from basically what the, the solution gives you, has that, have you found that in kind of more recent updates, Ben, we've, we've provided you visibility of storage used and mm -hmm. things that That's are going to be required for tenant org. Has that been a useful feature for you guys to do in, in, to help with planning? Absolutely. So um, in the first few iterations of Cloud Director, when the Cloud to Cloud and Ground to Cloud functionalities came out, um, we had to actually go tinkering around in the database, pulling metrics out of there to uh, do forward planning. Uh, to ensure that we have enough headroom um, in the environments um, for, for the disaster recovery uh, space that we sell. Uh, and in, in later versions, um, a lot of insight has been brought out in terms of the amount of storage consumed for DR, as well as the amount of CPU and memory required on a per organization level uh, to ensure that we always have the sufficient headroom available to, to cater for, for any uh, of the customers uh, failing over. And have you found that, you know, as you offer uh, testing at any time uh, for your customers, have you found them taking up more testing and being more diligent with that? Because it's always a always an interesting question. Everyone's got protection mm -hmm. for how regularly are they realistically testing it? You're only as good as your last test, really. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our managed service provider customers are actually very good at doing this. Um, what they do is in their propositions to their end user customers, they include uh, quarterly or, or biannual uh, disaster recovery tests that get ran as a value added service. And this is obviously then something that they get to make more and more billables out of, um, mm -hmm. which is where they will actually invoke uh, once, once a quarter, once every six months, uh, an actual DR test where they will take uh, certain stakeholders from, from the end user organization uh, get them to to log on into the test environment, uh, run through a DR uh, simulation, bring up the the test environment, and ensure accessibility to the data. Ensure that um, it is isolated from production. Ensure that everything works the way it's expected to work. Um, and and that is a I think a very um, very important value add uh, that that MSPs can offer uh, end users uh, end user customers. Um, through through that functionality. It also gives you a bit of an indication as to what you might expect um, during an actual disaster um, uh, event uh, when you mm -hmm. actually have to invade fail failover and what that looks like. Um, like, like Andrew sure. always says, if you want good firefighters, uh, you should have lots of fires. Um, <laughs> so the more, the more they do uh, DR tests, the more comfortable they become with the, the steps and the procedures and where there might be pitfalls and, 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 and to, to improve on those. Yeah, great. Well, we also don't limit the, the number of tests or the length of those tests. Uh, you know, we have the available resources there. People can test as frequently as they want to. Um, it is a chargeable event, but if you're only going to bring something up for an hour or two, you know, we, we meet and build on an hourly basis. So it's a few rands or cents, uh, dollars and mm -hmm. cents, pounds and pence. We'll, we'll choose your currency. Is that charged at the same rate, Andrew? Is it just the production compute rate when they fail over? Yeah, yeah it's, charged, it's charged at our usage rate. So we, we, we're consistent in that regard. And yes, yeah. of course, there's also a sort of an insurance charge to make sure that those resources are available in the event that people need to, to fail over or, or test. Mm. I suppose it's also worth just, just reaffirming that when you do these um, DR tests or when actual DR uh, gets invoked, you are failing over and starting up on a production platform with all the bells and whistles, the latest and greatest and hardware and software technology stacks deployed. And we find actually more often than not that people um, running DR tests from on-premise, as an example, find that their test environments outperform their production environments quite significantly uh, because we run our uh, DR 
locations um, onto our production clusters. Right. <laughs> A value add. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> they don't want to go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to just run through a configuration of a, um, a replica job from our Cape Town environment to our Johannesburg environment. I go to the outgoing replications tab on the left and hit new protection. Uh, it's asking me for my multi-site authentication details, so I'll just authenticate against my Johannesburg logins. Uh, and now I get a list of uh, vApps and virtual machines running in Cape Town. Uh, so I'll take the uh, I'll take a VM out of our Freaky Friday VM that we prepared for this demo. Um, this is actually a, a CSE deployment. Um, I'm going to take the master node from from that VM and just replicate it to Johannesburg. If I wanted to, I could select the entire VM and replicate all virtual machines. But for now, I'll just use that one. From the next screen, you're able to um, specify the virtual data center that you're replicating towards. In Johannesburg, we've got two virtual data centers available, so I'll send it to DC1. Um, and you are able to uh, pre-select the storage policy that you wish to replicate to. I'll keep it on all flash. We've got preset SLA profiles that can be applied to quickly and easily uh, preset RPO uh, um, and, and uh, recovery point uh, time and instance uh, var variables. Um, if these are either are not uh, suitable fit for purpose, you are able to manually set uh, your recovery point, as an example, all the way down to five minutes. Um, Do you guys charge right? for the, the networking aspect of that as well? Because obviously if you're doing more replication, there's more, more data mm -hmm. transfer. Not separately. What we actually do is we, we charge a different amount for the that SLA profile type, uh, um, okay. and it's dependent on yes, it's dependent on how frequently the, uh, the replications occur. Okay, but we don't charge separately for networking. Yeah, we we also just have a, a a requirement that if you go below an hour or even below thirty five, so say thirty minutes rather, um, you've got to stick it on uh, all flash storage. Uh, because if you're going to put it on on slow spinning disks, it's just going to, you're never going to hit that RPO. So realistically, yeah. it has to be on, on better performant um, storage policies. Yeah, very good point. Uh, you're able to enable the retention policy for multiple points and time instances. And this is something that we um, highly encourage everyone to always use. Uh, the, the, most, um, the biggest reason for that is ransomware. If your on-prem environment gets encrypted, infected with ransomware, and that then gets replicated into your DR environment, uh, your DR environment is encrypted as well. With the ability to have multiple immutable points in time rollbacks for your replicas, uh, you are actually able to protect yourself um, from, from an event like that in your DR environment. Uh, some other options, you can delay the start of the first synchronization to outside business hours, as an example. Uh, you have the ability to exclude individual disks from the replications. And of course, Cloud Director Availability um, supports seeding virtual machine data, uh, which becomes very handy uh, when looking at ground to, ground to cloud replications, where you need mm. uh, a, a big amount of data preceded uh, to be able to set up replications uh, efficiently. Yeah. So we run through that, we'll hit finish. Um, and this will run for a couple of minutes uh, once and uh, once this uh, task finishes, we'll actually be able to see the replication traffic live on the wire through the traffic graphs. It's, it's really, I can't tell you how nice it is to see a, a, a non-slow uh, demo system, which <laughs> you usually have to deal with. <laughs> this, is, this is actually brilliant. It's happening uh, yeah. so quickly. This is, <laughs> this is our production environment. This is live. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. So, th so things might go wrong. <laughs> nah, we're, we're pretty confident on our live demos to be honest yeah so it's, and, and this was a nice addition a few releases back where you could actually um, see uh, the the traffic live per replication um, just so that you can know that, that it's not just sitting there saying that it's working it is actually working you can keep track yeah. of the effects that it has on your network in terms of the data transit um, I suppose it's also worth mentioning um, these replica jobs, especially when it comes to a ground to cloud scenario, 
can eat up a ton of bandwidth. Um, and we therefore always suggest that uh, customers consider taking direct connections into us, which uh, is away from the internet breakout uh, and is private to the rest of the world that allows them to replicate that traffic over a dedicated link uh, straight into our environment and not necessarily over the internet. From a deployment perspective um, for, for, for VMware and Cloud Director and everything else, there's no, uh, there's no difference, uh, no, no changes being made. It's just on the networking level that we then pick that traffic up at the source and tunnel it through uh, directly into our environment and not over the public internet. Yeah. And some nice new enhancements. I think it was in the last version, make the uh, selection of the replicator uh, network interface card. It's going to use much easier. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah. Also. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, that, that, that'll run through and finish. Uh, once a replication job is actually completed, uh, you have the ability to, at the click of a button, do a failover test or invoke an actual failover event. Uh, you can also use this uh, quite nicely for migration, uh, which is what, what one of our uh, customers are currently busy migrating uh, a massive estate uh, off of an on-prem VMware environment into, into a, our production environments um, using the, the migrate functionality uh, of Cloud Direct Availability, uh, which allows you to do a shutdown on source, final Delta sync and a power up on destination for yep. those for those virtual machines. Yeah. Also, if you've made some mistakes during the initial setup, you need to change the storage policy or the network settings, or the replication settings, or anything like that. All self-serviceable through through the user interface, um, and all just very frictionless in terms of understanding where what is and what it does, and, and all the rest. You can see it's almost done synchronizing. Okay. All right. Um, I think that pretty much covers the cloud director availability cloud to cloud replication portion. Um, what I will demonstrate now is uh, how we can use Veeam uh, to provide a ground to cloud replication. Uh, similarly, uh, just to mention, we, you can do this exact same with uh, cloud director availability if the on-prem environment is running uh, VMware um, and you've got the appliance deployed. So this is my Veeam backup server. Uh, my backup and replication console that I'm logged into uh, on the backup infrastructure tab under service providers, I've added um, our Veeam Cloud Gateway in Cape Town. Uh, under the Ghostbusters organization, I've got a special user created for these replications. Um, and uh, just to show you what the setup looks like, uh, you configure a... Um, a, a gateway uh, endpoint with a port uh, you provide, uh, you, you, you verify the SSL certificate and provide login credentials for the environment and hit apply and finish. That then adds a service provider endpoint in your Veeam uh, console. You can then configure under your replication um, tasks, a replication job that is sent to that service provider endpoint as a target. Um, and similarly, if, we, if you are consuming Veeam Cloud Connect backup, uh, like Andrew mentioned, we facilitate sending Cloud Connect uh, backups into the environment and then doing instant VM recoveries into the Cloud Director environment in Cape Town and Johannesburg. Um, so, so those options are available as well. Those are quite I've... useful, sorry to interrupt, but those are quite oh, sure. useful tools for migration purposes, particularly like mentioned earlier, um, if the environment isn't VMware. Um, yeah. You know, we can only do replications from VMware to VMware, but uh, with, with either of these tools. But if people are using um, Veeam and are using Hyper-V or, say, Nutanix, um, they can do a uh, backup copy job into our Cloud Connect backup repository. And we can do an instant VM recovery out of Hyper-V into VMware straight out of that repo. So particularly for migration purposes, um, but also for disaster recovery purposes, it's not a fully featured disaster recovery with a sort of a built-in failback procedure and uh, the ability mm. to, you know, re recover self-service, but um, it is something that, that can be done um, a little bit sort of pragmatic. Uh, let's, mm -hmm. let's call it that. Um, but it is something that can be done as a, as a, as a, you know, not a fully fledged um, DR type solution. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just going to, I've, I've, I've got a job set up already uh, just because these things kind of take a bit longer. So just to streamline for the demo. 
mm-hmm. um, a, a, a replication job with a single virtual machine added out of our um, out of our Johannesburg deployment. Um, so one of our Linux workers. Um, this is then being sent to my VDC in Cape Town, uh, to my Cloud Connect V app, uh, and to the All Flash storage policies. And all of these um, can be modified, of course, if I've got multiple uh, service provider endpoints to replicate to, or if I want to send it to a different V app uh, within Cloud Director. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm able to drill down into that VDC and, and view all the V apps. Uh, and, and change if I want to send it to a different VAP, but it by default creates a Cloud Connect VAP. And similarly, the storage policy, if I want to change the destination storage policy of the replica. Uh, I've configured it to keep uh, seven restore points and uh, append a, a hyphen uh, underscore replica to the VM itself that gets created. Um, nothing further really configured i don't have this scheduled or anything like that so i'm just going to click on run the job when i click finish and this will be the first time that it runs actually so it will take a, a bit of time as it uh, indexes the vm on Veeam, creates a snapshot and, and everything else uh, before it then kicks off a replication but the important thing here is it's um fully integrated this workflow into cloud director so it's actually going to appear in the v app in cloud director yeah. yeah, so so once this actually starts replicating data, I'll, I'll head it back to the control panel and you'll see that the, the VM itself is available. Now, from the on-premise Veeam backup and replication console, you're, ob- you're, you're obviously able to invoke uh, a failover and bring that VM up in the environment. If your on-premise environment, along with your Veeam backup server, is destroyed, you're able to log into the Cloud Director dashboard on our side and just power on those VMs as they sit in the VApps. So it's, again, complete self-service functionality when it comes to uh, invoking failovers. And what needs to be deployed at the, the client and the customer site for this to work? Uh, typically, um, you would need a Veeam backup and replication server as well as a Veeam backup uh, and replication proxy server. Uh, so it's just the VBS and the, and the proxy. Um, you need a backup repository to save metadata into, although it's uh, typically you could do it on the same Veeam backup and replication server that you're running. Um, and there are additional options like the WAN accelerator that can be deployed. Um, so it, it, yeah, it's, it's quite minimal in terms of what's required. Right. In theory, so you've already got that stuff deployed if you're using Veeam for backup and replication already yeah. anyway. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Whereas I suppose the difference with Cloud Director availability um, and being Cloud Connect replication is that you do need to install the replication appliance um, on in your VM infrastructure. Um, some people may have that installed already, but and it is free. Um, it comes with with uh, vSphere, uh, but you would need to install that. And typically, we also install um, and sometimes for Cloud Connect replication as well, um, and an NSX uh, headless edge so that we can do uh, layer two tunneling so we can keep the same subnet between the two sites, which is something that customers often want. Yeah, excellent. Um, and that's, some, that's something, we, have you used the automation that we provide with Cloud Direct Availability to do that, Benjamin? Um, we have, yes. Um, we are actually working with some of our service provider partners now to um, build those um, DR failover test plans um, to to more to, to streamline the, the, the failover or, or the test failover the, the scenarios when it comes to um, those those quarterly or annual or biannual tests that need to occur. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, you, you'll notice that this takes a little bit longer, but eventually it gets running. And then it will start replicating data into the environment um, from, from the on-prem environment. And similarly, just like with Cloud Director Availability, um, we are able to, again, facilitate direct connection into our environments to avoid the data transit, uh, saturating yeah. your, your internet breakout links that you might have on-premise. So for this, just like Cloud Director Availability, you, you ne- literally need to provide them with the endpoint URL um, the credentials and the certificate, and they should be able to connect through. Is that that's what you give them to to start this job working? 
Exactly. Um, and we, um, because it's all authenticated against the cloud director um, uh, identity provider, uh, they're able to create their own user service accounts for, for these uh, different integration systems um, and, and have complete management over those authentication details um, yeah. uh, required for setup. We also um, standardized our Veeam deployments to have our cloud, our, our, our Veeam cloud gateways listen on port 443 uh, because we find in most uh, industries, uh, typically um, outbound 443 traffic is never ever really blocked on, on, on enterprise firewalls. So the, 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 the deployment um, becomes really um, quick and easy uh, in terms of configuring your replica endpoints, whether it is with Veeam Cloud Connect replication or Cloud Direct Availability. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's worth, Benjamin, while we're waiting for this, just having a quick look at the Veeam backup integration into the UI for sure Cloud thing. Director. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we may not need to go through a whole demo, but um, just to show the plugin and the ex mm. extension. So historically, this used to be a separate URL, a separate window that you'd need to, to, to visit to, to log in with your um, Cloud Director credentials to access the self-service um, backup and restore portal. But it's now been integrated into Cloud Director, which saves you a, a click and a link and, and everything else to remember. Uh, from the um, from the drop down, I just hit the data protection with Veeam um, mm -hmm. tab, and I'm presented first of all with a dashboard explaining uh, or showcasing the the, the, the last uh, 24 hours of uh, virtual machine backup jobs that have uh, ran, uh, as, uh, and an overview of data consumption. Um, you're able to very easily um, create uh, and manage your backup jobs, and the uh, the wizards and everything are, are if you're if you're used to working with Veeam backup and replication server console, uh, this will be uh, exactly the same. Um, what a nice feature that was brought in um, uh, recently was the ability to do uh, GFS types of backups, where you can keep uh, weekly backups for a certain amount of weeks, monthly backups for a certain amount of months, and yearly That's backups good. for a certain amount yeah. of years, um, which was lacking in the past, uh, but, but it's nice uh, that it's there now. Um, and similarly, uh, because we offer our, our backup repositories with um, scale-out backup repository capability, um, we're actually able to facilitate offloading those, those longer uh, retained instances, the monthlies, the yearlies, exam, uh, or even the weeklies, um, onto a cheaper um, object storage um, extent, mm -hmm. which then in a way facilitates you to be able to replace tape backups um, as you're now doing your archiving into a different uh, provider in a different medium um, in, in a different location. So uh, very, very much belts and braces approach from, from that regard. Yeah. Much nicer than tapes. <laughs> no, we are. And, and it's worthwhile also, also mentioning that we're neutral in that regard. So if somebody wants to use Wasabi or Backblaze or Azure Blob or AWS S3, then we're happy to set that up. They obviously mm. need to give us the details, but we're happy to, happy to set that up as a capacity tier um, mm -hmm. or an archive tier in their scale up backup repository. Um, mm. You know, we're not we're not precious about this. Um, you, you can use any objects for it you like. Yeah. Similarly, you've got the ability to recover information, either restore virtual machines uh, by uh, overwriting the existing ones or restoring alongside or um, pulling individual files or database items uh, out, of, um, out of those backups. Um, so there's a files browser, as an example, where you can select your virtual machine backup files um, and then drill down and recover files and then restore them either to the running virtual machine or download them to your local machine. Uh, similarly with the, the database software, um, restoring uh, SQL and Oracle database items um, either to the original virtual machine or to, to a new location. Which version of the plugin, well, which version of Veeam are you running here, uh, Ben? Currently, we're running Veeam version 11a. Yeah, because I, I think the files was a, a, a new uh, addition into this UI. If I remember rightly, you had to jump into the Veeam UI previously to, to actually browse yeah. the files. That's, That's really right. good. I'm glad to see that there. Yeah, I think if we look back, this thing should be busy now. Yeah, yeah there we go. so you can see this is now replicating um, again virtual machine data being sent across the wire into uh, the production cloud environment Cape Town. In fact, if I now browse over to my virtual data center in Cape Town and I look at my 
Oh, well, I saw it there already. My virtual machines tab on the left-hand side, I can see there's that Lino one uh, replica VM that is now available mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, as, as a virtual machine. Once the, the, uh, the initial sync is done, I can actually just power on this, this replica in this environment already, um, and it'll boot up uh, into the, the, the guest operating system. Fantastic. Brilliant. So, well, just let that run. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a very nice uh, combination of cloud direct availability providing the DR and, and Veeam as um, either backup or, or data protection from on-prem to your cloud, uh, you know, any endpoint. And like you say, backing off onto longer term storage of your, your choosing. It's, um, yeah, it's a very robust um, solution that covers, I think, pretty much all of the use cases I can think about. Mm, absolutely yeah and if it doesn't we'll install another extension that covers that as well um so yeah i mean we're we are like i say if there's demand we're happy to do it um we'd like mm. to cast our net as wide as possible and you know we're dependent on our service providers to tell us um where the demand is and and to request those kinds of things um so you know we we don't feel any um reluctance to deploy more and more software on our environment um it's um it's just it enables us to as i say you know increase our addressable market um and it's the same thing when it comes to our deployments of cloud director you know it's a textbook deployment it's got you know all of the features there because any one of our service providers could ask for that you know it has to be granular mm -hmm. yeah well, Andrew, Ben, thank you very much for the demo today and walking me through this solution. Um, like I said, I think it's a, a very high value solution. I'm, I'm really pleased to actually have got your time and got the demo recorded. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of service provider partners will be very interested in seeing how you're doing things and how successful it's being. So once again, thank you very much for your partnership and thank you for attending the Feature Friday today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Delighted to be here. Cheers. 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 Cheers.